Well, good morning, guys, and welcome back to the shop in my 2001 Beaver Patriot Thunder. And you know, it's been about a year and a half since we upgraded the batteries, or at least the house batteries from the four six volt AGM lead acid batteries that were in it to this Vader lithium iron phosphate 460 amp hour battery. And I thought it might be time to check back in to see how it's holding up and to address a lot of the complaints that I got on the last videos that I did on it. Now, while I have not taken you guys on every adventure that I've gone with this motor home over the last year and a half, I can tell you that on every single trip that I've gone on, I've had zero problems with my lithium iron phosphate battery from Vader. So it has been a great battery for me. There's even been times here at the shop I've accidentally left the battery disconnect on, the lights on for weeks. And even in the shade without solar charging it back up again, the battery was still only down to about 35%. So if I go ahead and I trip the solar from working, and then we come inside here, the battery voltage on the inverter is 14.2. I can turn the inverter on. And with the refrigerator going, and the other 110 lights on, that battery is still doing pretty well. In fact, let's go ahead and take a look at the the uh, information on the app so you can see what we're talking about and how many times I've cycled the battery at this point. The Elephant app right there, we can see the battery is sitting at 100%. If we scroll down to here, we can see the four individual cell voltages. They're all pretty close to each other. And then we can see I've cycled it 14 times. Otherwise, our battery voltage is sitting pretty close to what the inverter said at 13.6. So needless to say, this Vader battery has been really great for me. And the app is one thing I actually didn't like about this Vader battery. But a year and a half later, it's time to address some of my big concerns I had when I installed this 460 amp hour Vader battery. And a lot of concerns that you guys had in the comment section. And the first thing I'm going to address is probably the durability of this Vader battery. While it is quite dusty and dirty, it didn't affect its performance at all. However, a lot of people were concerned that unlike Arizona, there are parts of North America that get quite cold and below freezing and that can damage the lithium iron phosphate batteries. And so they didn't want to use them because, you know, if they get too cold, they won't work anymore. So we're going to address that first off. Because even though they do make heated pads, you can put these batteries on. I know a lot of you guys won't do that and you'll still complain. So right here we have a new Vader 460 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery which is going to solve that problem because this should be nearly the identical battery but it has a few substantial upgrades on it a year and a half later and the update isn't how well they package the battery because they definitely package it just as good as they did the last one and it's definitely not that they made it lighter because this is still 105 pounds <laughs> And they definitely didn't change the dimensions or the case design, but look at this right here. This is self-heating, so this has a built-in heater on it, but that's not the only change. Now, I'd like to believe that Vader listened to my videos complaining about their battery, and they changed it for me, particularly. Because right next to the on-off button that was there before is this tiny, tiny little wire, and that's the Bluetooth antenna. It's now outside of the case which hopefully now means that the Bluetooth range is substantially better than it was for me. In my setup on my 40 foot motor home, from the battery compartment over here, all the way up front, about 36 feet away to the driver's seat, where sometimes I couldn't get coverage from the battery when I'm driving down the road. But also speaking of Bluetooth, they developed a whole new app for it. Because if you look at the side right here, it says it has an app connection on it because Vader did develop their own app for their batteries. You don't have to rely on a third party battery app to operate anymore. Because if you look right there, you have a QR code you can download and then link to your battery very easily. And I have used this Vader app on another battery installation I did on another Beaver motorhome recently. And I was really quite impressed with the app itself. So let's go ahead and scan it and see if we can't link up this battery. So all you have to do is put your phone up to there. It'll take you to the QR code link. That'll help you download the app for either iOS or Android. I suppose we probably need to turn the battery on. And we'll go ahead and open up the app right here. And we can see that it shipped with a 49% charge, has 200 and 
34 amp hours of capacity out of its 460 that's available to it. And that was as incredibly easy as it gets. So what I want to do now is walk away from this battery as far as I can and maybe see if we can see the range on it now. Now I'm about as far away as I can get because we were underneath that container canopy right over there next to the fifth wheel and the motorhome's over there. Let's see what the app says. It still says we have four bars of uh, connection right here. We still have connection to the battery and we can see the voltage on all the cells. So you can even see the temperature of the uh, MOSFETs. So this is kind of impressive. Now I don't know if the battery manufacturer Vader really did put that Bluetooth antenna outside of the case because I complained about it, but it does prove that they are trying to improve their product, which always tells me whether a manufacturer is a good manufacturer or not, if they're always improving their product. So when I talk about improving their product, Maybe they didn't change the case that much. They did put bigger stickers on there with a lot more information on it, but they also stamped on a riveted metal data plate that gives you all the information you need, including how much it weighs and the dimensions of it, even the uh, model number. So, I mean, that's pretty impressive to me. Let's go ahead and turn it off. Because Vader did tell me, even though I don't tear down batteries on this channel, they did make it where these screws can come off, so you can take a look at the battery. They encouraged me to take a look at the inside of it. Because I know one of my big concerns was these vents right there, and you guys did see all the dust was on top of the battery before, because we all have concerns about dust, dirt, and debris, right? Now, another thing I can see that they obviously improved, well, I don't know if it's an improvement, because they got rid of something. There was a temperature thermometer on top or built into the case of the old battery right here it also tell you I think uh, what the moisture content was but as you can see it really doesn't do a lot of good especially it doesn't give you the information on the Bluetooth app so while some people might say removing functionality is not making the product better I think removing that dial up there honestly improved the product because they transferred all the information to the app so you can view it wherever you'd like to now before we take this off, let me just go ahead and pull the front cap off, or the front access panel off. Ah. Alright, so we can see that antenna goes to the Bluetooth module right down there. And this is the BMS system right there. So I think it's a pretty good looking board to me. Uh, see, that connection's not loose, that connection's not loose. And this whole section that's vented, you can kind of see the vents on the side, is really just going to be for the BMS system. It has nothing to do with the battery cells. But we can go ahead and kind of pull this back and take a look. That looks pretty impressive to me too. So we have pretty good sized lug connections to the batteries, individually split off right here to each individual uh, BMS module. Foam bracing on top of it, plastic installation. And I know everybody's always concerned about um, a thread sealant to keep the uh, connections from coming loose and making sure it has that uh, expansion joint or bend on those uh, terminal bars. So I think it's a pretty good construction. And I know in some of my videos, people always complain that I don't add enough cushion support to these batteries, but as you can see, they already have built-in cushions on them. Generally, I don't tear batteries apart because most of them are in a plastic case and to take them apart, you kind of have to destroy them. That's not what I'm about, destroying things. While it's unlikely you're ever going to be tearing these apart to rebuild them or fix them, it is nice to know that you could do that if you wanted to. And also, now we know that these vents only go to the BMS and right here has nothing to do with the cells that are back here. Now, speaking of the cells, there are four of them. It is a lithium iron phosphate chemistry on it. We've covered this many, many times. Uh, basically, 460 amp hours is going to be the equivalent of eight six volt lead acid batteries. But even better because there's no maintenance and the weight savings by themselves, even though this is 105 pounds, is significantly less than what eight lead acid batteries would be. Probably the last thing we should address is going to be that it is self-heating because I know a lot of people told me they live up north and they don't want to get one of these lithium iron phosphate batteries because they're concerned that the battery is going to get damaged when it gets below freezing outside and they can't take out their battery every single time they put this into storage. 
But unlike the one that I installed, this one does have the built-in heater and the heating function automatically uh, turns on when the battery temperature is lower than 32 degrees or zero degrees uh, Celsius or, you know, freezing. And it'll uh, turn off once it reaches 41 degrees. It does say that uh, the charging current when that's happening is going to be limited to uh, uh, 10 amps as opposed to its recommended charge current, which is 92 amps DC. Now, it does say its operating temperature is going to be the same. It does still have the low temperature cutoff, so if it does get too cold, it will stop it from charging and stop it from actually discharging when it gets way too cold. Of course, with the built-in heaters, uh, you shouldn't have a problem with it getting too cold on it. Now, how much those heaters draw? I don't really know. Let's see if the information's in here. Now, maybe I didn't look hard enough, but I couldn't find the information in the manual itself. But I did look on their website, and it draws about 90 to 105 watts of power. So we'll just even it out to say 100 watts when it's turned on. So then I guess theoretically, with a fully charged battery from Vader here, this has about 5,900 watt hours of battery capacity. So at 100 watts, we could run those heaters on the battery. But if you put a solar panel on the roof, you should never have to worry about the battery being discharged enough so you would damage the uh, battery itself. So it does seem like it's a pretty viable option uh, to me. Like all things, you should always check my math because I've been known to do lazy quick math. Let's go ahead and get this battery installed because there's still a few other things we want to fix on my battery installation from a year and a half ago. Now luckily, because I updated the uh, compartment door lock to a locking lock, and I put these straps around the battery, I haven't actually had to worry about anybody taking my battery. And it's been very secure in the battery compartment, no matter what all the naysayers in those uh, video comments actually said. Nobody stole it, and the battery wasn't damaged. The aluminum strap worked out perfectly. Now, speaking of straps, I know people were complaining that I should have supported my battery cable right here, but truth be told, I never really liked how I wired up this battery a year and a half ago. Personally, I don't think we should have more than one thing connected to the terminals of a battery. Maybe you can get away with two things, but not three, four, five, or more, like you can see on my negative side. Remember, every connection right here is a uh, potential corrosion or loose connection point, which is problematic. Now, this is just a temperature sensor for my solar charger, so don't worry about that. So what I'm gonna do is change how I wired this up so we don't have to worry about that coming loose again. We're gonna go ahead and install a bus bar from Victron. Now, while this is a Lynx Power 1000, this is not a smart one. There's no circuit board right here. It's just gonna be a bus bar for negative, a bus bar for positive. So we get all those extra connections off the top of the battery right there. And we dress up our battery compartment a little bit better. So that's another upgrade I wanted to do a year and a half later. And of course that is what Vader is recommending. If you do want to put these in parallel, uh, use a bus bar for the positive and ground connections. And then for all those sticklers of uh, perfection, those cables should all be the exact same length. Now, before I go any further with rewiring this, I want to do something that you can only do safely on this Vader lithium iron phosphate battery that you cannot do on a lead acid battery. We're going to turn it off. That way we can safely disconnect the battery cables. All right, so now with that safely disconnected, we can go ahead and remove this battery. And then for everybody that said that the... Uh, Aluminum straps are going to damage the steel case, have electrolysis, nothing. We've gone thousands of miles on this setup and no damage to it at all. I know I also got a little bit of pushback that the way I installed the battery with the support underneath wasn't going to be correct. It was going to cause damage to the steel. It's going to corrode. And I think we can all agree everything's worked out fine. Even my custom made little brackets where I split the middle of this. Yeah, beautiful job. Beautiful, I don't know why you guys doubt me. And now I can safely get this installed with the battery out of the way. Won't be too difficult. All right, maybe that wasn't quite as easy as I hoped it would be. But you can see right here, I have my positive bus bar. That's just gonna be the solar that goes over to the solar breaker right there. That's the negative for the solar. 
and then we have the inverter with the bus fuse from 300 amp out bus fuse and we have the house distribution back there and this coming from the battery that we just installed and the same with the negative right here negative goes up to the bus bar right there then we have two chassis grounds one for the uh, distribution one for the inverter and then we have two more uh grounds got our chassis grounds back there for distribution purposes otherwise now we only have one connection on the battery post closes pretty easily and doesn't put any strain back here on the connection like everybody was worried about before so now i just need to put the covers back on those terminals and this time i don't have to modify them like i did before because there's only one cable on each post i did have to modify that one quite a bit and even this one over here had to notch that side out now i just go ahead and put the cover on the bus bar just like that and check this out you can slide these caps off right there if you really, really needed to as jump points for the battery, which you can't get to very easily back there. So I think that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and turn the chassis battery back on again. Go ahead and turn the battery back on. Slide that back. Cables look great. This looks much more professional than it did before. Go ahead and turn our solar back on. Make our way back into here. Better disconnects work. And inverter showing 13.2. Let's go ahead and turn the inverter on. Looks like we didn't do anything bad. I guess the biggest thing we need to check is if we can check the battery voltage sitting right here as a driver. And yes, with the engine running, we're charging about 78 amps or thereabout, putting out about a thousand watts. So Look at that, we have only 235, I'll call it 240 of the 460, so looks like we'd have to be running this for about three, three and a half hours with the engine running to fully charge up these batteries, which isn't too bad really when you think about it, because that'd be like charging four six volt batteries up, and that would take better part of four day, or two full days normally to do it the correct way so when i'm driving down the road i can check my batteries very easily now unlike before so there it is guys i've pretty much solved all the problems that were associated with my previous vader battery installation now in fairness that wasn't vader's fault on most of it it was my installation problems but i thought you guys might enjoy seeing that and i thought showing that they do make a heated version might be something useful for a lot of people in the northern climates that might be concerned about putting a lithium battery in this one like i said pretty much does replace eight six volt batteries when you talk about depth of discharge without any maintenance issues too and it looks like the heated option only adds i think about fifty dollars or a hundred dollars so kind of a no-brainer to get it at this point too i think it's about eleven hundred dollars and again if you factor it out for eight six volt batteries even if you're generous at 150 dollars a piece for those batteries it's almost an even uh, comparison, about $1,200 for those batteries, about $1,100 for this battery. I'll put a link in the description for the battery and that bus bar. And I'm really pleased with the way this has turned out. Uh, we covered all the problems and hopefully you guys won't be upset with me anymore. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye. I just about ran out of shade. Now I just have to clean up. Sure does look a lot better now though. Because Vader did develop a battery man. Because Vader did develop their own smart. Because Vader did. And I have used the brand new Vader app on another Beaver instant. And I have used this Vader app. It's probably a third. A quarter. A quarter of what eight uh, lead acid batteries would be. No. Is 